All right, so it's live. Now, um, we we need to discuss the uh, the changes, right, obviously. So the change that's taken place, what, two weeks ago now? So we all have had some experience, whether we've seen our students' score reports, and um, some of us probably taken a test already as well to see if there's any significant difference or changes that um, that's come from this besides the fact that it's shorter. What are we doing? What are we going to talk about first? We want to talk about the, the new enabling skills, right? Have you guys had a chance to review the new enabling skills? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah. So based on that, do you feel like it's more helpful or less helpful from the uh, compared with the, the actual enabling, the former enabling skills? Michelle says thumbs down. What do you guys uh, think? No, definitely less, uh, less informative, um, especially to just a test taker. It doesn't necessarily show you, you know, sort of which spe specific skill to look at. It just tells you how to improve your English skills as opposed to test skills. That's the way I feel anyway. Correct. And I, I think it's very general. It doesn't help at all, even though it tells you to improve general skills that will not necessarily improve your grade on the exam. What do you think, Mani? Yeah, I think, yeah, not as helpful as the, the old enabling skills, but I, I made a video on, on that on my YouTube video, how we can see the bars, you know, like the length of the bars. So yeah. even though I got 90, like all the bars are not full. So right. it means that, you know, I'm still lacking in something, but yeah. I'm just not sure where am I lacking exactly. So um, it's harder for students and some students find it confusing when they read the description. You have to right. read, you have to read more academic papers or you have to listen to yeah. like, I don't know, someone's names or something like that. So it's very yeah. general as Michelle yeah. said. Yeah, study more graphs well. and general stuff like this. Yeah. yeah, It said the same thing for me when I got 90 in speaking, but it says that I need to listen to more lectures and read graphs better. But then why did they give me 90 if, if I have to improve that? <laughs> That's the thing. I think even with the um, oral fluency pronunciation written discourse grammar, we would see like very low grades around 50 or 60 and the person would still be able to get 90. Mm -hmm. So I'm guessing it's just, it's just the same thing. It's just a different way of showing it. Mm. Yeah. Have you been, have you been able to use that to, um, to, to evaluate what they need to improve? Or have you guys um, been using the old, old score report? Hold up, I know what you're thinking. Did he just say what I thought he said? Yes, I said old score report. A lot of people probably already know about this, but in case you didn't know, well, now you're gonna know. The first thing you wanna do is log in, obviously, right? So type in your username and your password, and I'll see you on the other side. So once you log in, this is the page that you're going to see. And you're going to see these three tabs up top, right? What you want to do is click on my activity. Once you get to this page, the only thing that matters is this right here. You want to click on payment history. And once you click on payment history, it'll take you to another page. Now on this page, it actually doesn't really matter. You're not going to take anything from here. What you want to do is look up on the URL. You see up here, the URL, you're going to change this. You're going to change this to the exact same way I type it. Okay. It's going to be a capital V. I E W score with the capital S and the reports with the capital R view score reports. And you change that to take you to another page. And once you're on this page, you're going to see the uh, view button. Now keep in mind, if you just got your score report, it might not be ready yet. The only button you see might just be send scores. So you're going to have to wait between 10 to 12 hours. That's what I noticed 10 to 12 hours later, you're going to get the view button. And when you get that view button, you just click on that and it's going to download your old score report PDF file. There you have it. That's how you get the old score reports. Now, if your trainer prefers to see the old score reports with the enabling skills, such as myself, that's how you get it for them. Now, let's hear Mani talk about how they're able to use the new enabling skills to see what you need to improve. I think the new skills profile help us out to understand. Um, so it gives us a broader idea of which question are they talking about? which before we didn't know, like we got to the point that now we know with the in, in old enabling skills, but before we would be testing to understand written discourse, where does it come from? Or um, if I get a low oral fluency, did it go well or did it do bad on um, re re repeat sentence, for example? So I think this new skills profile help us out a bit more on understanding which question is this person not doing so well 
Um, mm. So I'm guessing for someone that doesn't like, I'll say like for students looking at this, they would know easier what mm. they're doing wrong instead of when they had to look at enabling skills, they wouldn't know it as easily. That's what I think. Mm. Yeah, I think we, um, mm. I mean, we are also taking a very similar approach because um, I feel that the previous um, enabling skills actually gave us an indication of more of our English skills. For example, they, they talked about um, fluency in general, but you wouldn't really be able to pinpoint um, which of the sections out of the speaking that, you know, your, your fluency would have fallen, um, as an example. But I think now um, they've just sort of shifted the way they would actually present um, the results. The skills itself assessment is the same but they present it in a different way so that now they've changed the names of the categories. Um, and I think if we have a better understanding, like in people like us, because we're teaching it all the time, we'd be able to look at the consistencies of the marks and then be able to work out, you know, what exactly which questions these particular categories would actually represent. And by having that in mind, I think it has helped me to a degree because I could tell the students, I think that, um, you know, you're lacking more in this particular section rather than a skill. Um, so mm. I think in that mm. respect, it has helped. But to be honest, I don't know um, how quickly you guys are analyzing these sections, but it's just taking me a bit of time to pinpoint exactly which questions the short writing actually refers to. So that's mm -hmm. what I'm trying to do right now. So I'm getting all the results of my students um, and having a look at sort of, you know, what their normal performance is like and mm -hmm. trying to sort of correlate which questions they would actually represent. So I'm, I'm thinking mm -hmm. that maybe in the long run, maybe uh, like let's say three, four months down the track, um, we would actually have a better understanding of, you know, which category the questions actually come from. But I so know that the, Sony um, has, has been yeah. taking tests, right? You, you have been taking tests and then yeah. you have been taking like tests a few times. And can you tell us a bit more about your experiments? Yeah, I actually had to take another one today. <laughs> After we finish this, I got to go take PTE. Um, wow. <laughs> what I noticed is that um, in the past when I have done the same ex experiments, and again, I, I think we mentioned this before where I would do it on the mock test and then I'll do it on the real exam and then I'll compare it. So in the past, even on the mock exams, if we only do the writing module, I'm sorry, including the summarized spoken text. If you do summarized written text, mm -hmm. spoken text, and the essay, uh, I usually get, a, in the past, I would get 40 to 45 points. Um, mm -hmm. This time around when I'm testing it, I'm getting 30 points. So mm -hmm. I'm not sure if they actually decreased the value of um, writing itself and increased the value of reading and listening because that's where you get the remaining writing points, right? So if I'm losing 10 mm -hmm. to 15 points in the writing, I got to make it up in that reading and that listening. And um, so that's why I'm trying to see now if there's consistency, because it's that's a big difference, 30 to 40. So today I'll take another test to see if I'm still in the 30s. Yeah, that's, so when that's you, the biggest difference. When you compare these results in which one was 30 and the other one was 45, did you use um, specific templates or did you do it like full on so writing? How it? I do the exam, how I do the exam is I'll do it with templates and I'll do it without and I'll compare okay. those two. So okay. in the past, for example, uh, this is recently though, this experiment, this was recently this year, earlier this year when I did the same experiment, it had already dropped. It wasn't just today mm -hmm. or recently. Um, it went from 40s in the past and right now, earlier this year when I did the same experiment with templates around 36 points, roughly around 36 points. Without templates, by writing it by myself, I got around 38 points. That's just the ballpark figure. So that's really close. That, that means like it might not even matter if it's templates or no templates, right? But now, last week when I did it, it was 30 with templates. So today I'm going to do it without templates. Mm. If it comes back 30 and 38, then I would yeah, say my templates don't them. work anymore. <laughs> I need to change that shit. Yeah. But um, if it comes back 30 and then today I do it with no templates and 32, oh, then that's very close. But that also means the writing score has dropped. Yeah. Right? The, the yeah. distribution of that. That's, that's, that's the biggest difference. The speaking has not changed at all. The speaking still gets the same amount of points yeah so maybe they so are that's, putting that's more marks into reading and writing fill in the blanks and write from dictation it could be but then because you know some, some of yeah. the exams some of the exams have only one summarized written text and have yeah. two yeah 
you know, so it can it it can also affect you know because obviously if right. you have two summarized written text, you're gonna gain more writing yeah, points that's what by I was only thinking. doing writing section itself. Yeah, that's what and I was then thinking, some exam have one summarized spoken points. text and some have two. How many mm -hmm. did you get on the exam? How many did you get? I got, uh, I think I got one, yeah, and then yeah. I got two summarized spoken text. But then yeah, some people too. got both times. one. Both times I got two. Yeah, and but then some people got two summarized written text and one summarized spoken. Text. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Mm. I've gotten the same way twice. Yes. Two summarized spoken text like you and then one summarized written text so far and uh, one essay each time. Mm. Yeah. But you but know we'll what see. I've we'll noticed? Um, mm -hmm. This I'm only looks, looking at the average um, like scores that all of my students have received. And I think I'm comparing a lot of about 30 to 40 students. Um, and the strange thing is, is that I've noticed everyone's writing score in general has improved. Now, mm -hmm. like obviously I'm not teaching a different template. I'm teaching the same one that I had always used. Um, and I'm comparing like 30 students. So I haven't just picked out like, you know, the higher leveled people. Um, I'm looking at, you know, everyone in general. And I'm, I've just, I just thought, wow, that's strange because I'm doing everything this, the same way. And I still have the similar broad range of students. I've got some who are only tar targeting to get 36 and I've got some who need to get 79. So I've still got that same range. Like this, there hasn't really m been much of a, a factor. Um, but the writing has generally improved. And what I felt was that when I invested a little bit more time in, you know, re like, pretty much retuning um, the SWT. Um, and what I mean by that is simply just working on their grammar to make sure we can reduce their errors. So not changing it in any way, but just, you know, reducing errors. I found that the scores in writing have actually improved, regardless of the fact that they've got no idea what they're doing in the reading. <laughs> mm. so, Do you think that because yeah. like less writing tasks mean less mistakes? Because like the more they write, the, the more mistakes they make. And since like, <laughs> you know, you, you have yeah. shorter writing now. Like I haven't been able to, you know, um, pinpoint down to exactly how many tasks they received, like whether it was one S SST and then two SWTs or whatever. I'm looking at their general performance, like the way they would approach um, language. And, you know, if I gave them, whether I gave them like, you know, one task to do, because we've got mock tests that we run on a weekly basis um, where we literally just test the students. We time them, you know, we get them to write a piece and I would mark it for them. So it's a very manual system. But regardless of whether I gave them one or three or whatever, their quality of English, you know, pretty much was consistent anyway. So with, with just that in mind, I thought, well, that, that's a bit strange. Writing seems to, I'm getting easier scores with writing, even the people who need like 79. I've got more people mm -hmm. getting like 88. I've got more people getting 88 and 86 and, you know, all of those higher end scores where I struggle to do me. that. <laughs> okay, so Minky, with your summarized written text, mm -hmm. what do you teach them? Do they use templates or... Yes, we um, use a template um, okay. to, and we use a template to keep a structure so that they're not sort of putting disjointed, um, you know, subjects and verbs and what whacking all over the place. So they know exactly where to put the subjects and the verbs. So that part of it, yes, is um, using a template. Otherwise, I get them just to pick out a few sentences in yep. designated places um, and putting it in. Now, what I found that there was a very big difference um, when we actually just got a proportion of the text and we just insert it. And the higher scores tended to come from doing one more step, which is basically to, to re like change the sequence of the wording. So, I mean, this is just something very, very typical that a lot of people would do anyway. Yeah. But it's picking out the same, but if you just leave it as it is and it's a sequence of more than five words as a block, it tends to be lower than people who just break up that sequence and just break it up into two blocks so that it's not like a whack of six or seven words. Um, so that's all we're focusing on in the class, basically, just just to find out how to change the sequence of that small little block that you're going to bring from the text. But even with that alone, you know, it just produced a generally higher um, range of scores than the previous before this, um, the test actually changed. So it's, even, yeah. sorry, just, no money. <laughs> I don't know, no, 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 no. I'm just saying that let's just wait for, for Sonny's experiment today as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. 
Well, um, the question that comes from what we're discussing now is so overall, do you, because the question what most students are asking is, is, is it harder? Is it harder? Do you feel like it's harder? So have you noticed anything about this being more difficult? No, no. I think no, we get more students. We got more students getting 90 and like 80 something. Yes. <laughs> I yes. noticed that. You're posting a lot of yeah. scores and then I'm saying yeah. like, damn, these guys are getting really high scores. <laughs> yeah, I had a getting few 90. students that would be the kind of students that when you see during class or doing, I don't know, a coaching call or something, you would say, this is a 90 student and they would get around their 80s. And I've had those students getting 90s since the 16th of November. So, yeah. Yeah. The funny thing is like when we post like 90 students and some people come in like, it, like oh, it looks fake and it looks like edited, but then, you know, it's possible. It's not impossible. I, I've been it is to possible. People, it's not impossible. <laughs> Like There's we're so many very people getting ninety. Yeah. yeah, I know. Like it's it's not impossible. Like and then and then like uh, it's fine. And um, the test itself is not. Uh, maybe it's a trap. I was telling students maybe it's a trap. They're making it easier at the first. <laughs> <laughs> and then <laughs> conspiracy theory. <laughs> now guys everyone taking the test this month okay <laughs> yeah let's just hope they don't yeah they're not making this into a trap like everyone yeah the exam changed but it's still easy and then everyone goes and but no it's not let's not think this way <laughs> this is this is something that i did notice though but i want to get your you guys um opinion or, or what you actually teach students as well uh time management we can agree is very important for the reading and the listening right um, that's something I was trying to see if it's changed, if it become, if it's become more difficult. Um, like for example, the reading questions, like how long do you allow your students to spend on any fill in the blanks or reorder paragraphs? Like how much time do you feel like it's enough for them or they are allowed to not enough? Like how much time can they spend? What is the range for you guys? I always, I don't give them a specific range because I think uh, each, each person might need, I don't know. 30 seconds more or a minute more that will make the full long difference for them to score, I don't know, 80% on that. And then they just skip multiple choices. So I never, I avoid to give them a, a specific number because sometimes, of course, with training, they end up um, lowering the amount of minutes they spend. Um, but also I think that when they feel like, oh, I have to do this within two minutes or 2.5, let's say, they tend to have more mistakes than when they just do it on their own timing. And they understand that it's okay, I can skip multiple choice later and that won't affect the score I deserve. So I try not to give them numbers because of that because I've seen people doing it really well within a minute and a half and some others needing 2.5, yeah, two minutes and a half and doing it very well. And yes, of course they wouldn't have a lot of time later but then it just keeps whatever they need to skip and yeah, and they still get the grade. Mm, I would do something That's similar. That's my approach. Like um, yeah, rather than giving a set time, I don't think I've ever given them a set time, like saying two minutes per question or something. Um, I generally teach them that, you know, once it hits like the rough one minute mark and they look at the question and depending on how far they've sort of determined what they're doing with it, I, I tell them at, you know, which point they have to decide whether to invest more time or not. Because there are some questions where, you know, you can tell that this person will not be capable of producing any much of a better quality answer, even if they did spend another minute on it. So for each of the questions, um, you know, in the classes, I would basically teach them how to approach them. So I tell them, look, as soon as the question comes up, you look at these factors. And if you feel that you can approach it, then you spend roughly this much time. But if you look at it and you know that it's not for you, then you pass it. You go on. So yeah, I, I divide that according to their level because obviously I've got students who need 35, like 36 and then some need 50, some uh, way up to 79. And sometimes when I'm trying to teach them in, this, in the same lot, um, it just becomes very difficult if you say, oh, it's two minutes. Because some people are wasting two minutes and some people are using the two minutes really well. Um, and also, you know, spending time on different sections will also depend on which score you're trying to target as well. So the way that I would usually do it is I, I, I give them key points. I tell them, look, when these questions appear, appear on the screen, you look at these factors and you decide to go or stop, hmm. you know, to, to actually solve it, spend more time or just move on. 
Um, that's how I would usually tell them. So I think it's more of a general time management plan as opposed to set time mm-hmm. per question. Mm-hmm. Bonnie, you go the same way, or do you have do you have a set time for that? No, I I give them set time, like no, yeah. because like um, normally in the exam, right, you get um, sixteen to eighteen questions. So either you get thirty two minutes or thirty six minutes. So it's very strict. So um, uh, normally, fill in the blanks, reading and writing comes first, right? First, is it? Yeah, like first. comes first. So, so first yeah, day. like they they can spend two or three minutes on filling the blanks, reading and writing. But then they have to be very careful because if they spend too much time on MCQ, like if I don't tell them that you need to limit yourself within two minutes or three minutes for like MCQ multiple, and then they end up, you know, spending four or five minutes, and then by the end of the test, they're just guessing all the yeah. fill in the blanks yeah. reading yeah. because they don't have much time left. They, I, I only have yeah. like five minutes for five questions. So yeah. obviously you're going to guess. And then it means that you're going to make more mistakes by guessing because like, do you know what I mean? But then, uh, and then I'm pretty sure that they're not going to like, they're not going to stick to two minutes exactly. Sometimes they're going to spend more, but at least by knowing that they have two minutes, then they will be more careful than if yeah. they think that, oh, I can spend like three or four minutes on, on the certain question. So, I mean, that's what I will do, but I respect everyone's like approach and everyone's doing it differently. And sometimes I tell students one thing, but it doesn't mean that they're, not, they're gonna listen to me. <laughs> I was about to say that it all depends on who is listening to our instructions. <laughs> Cause sometimes we're gonna say, don't care. Like I gotta do this in one minute and a half. And some others say, no, nah, I'll take time. So. Yeah. It all depends on who we are teaching and how they like mm. receive the information. So, Sonny, going back to the time management, yeah. What so was the your reason why yeah? I bring that up because so basically what Mani described for her way of teaching is pretty much like I'm. I say it, I couldn't have said it better. That's I, I do it the same way that she's explaining it. So I limit the, the number of minutes that they can use. So when I take the test, I put that same restriction on myself. Mm. And what I noticed was that when I finished the test, if I followed that time restriction, I had two minutes left. So that's me doing oh. the test. So mm. now that means if we were able to skip the multiple choice questions, not skip, we guess. We don't skip questions, we guess the questions. Yes. Um, there's not that many to, to, to guess anymore, right? You can't guess that many multiple choice questions. Yes. So if you were to just guess the questions, you'll save maybe five minutes, but you got to distribute that five minutes throughout the whole reading. I think that's that's actually more difficult now, the time management part, but because I restrict them on how much time they can use. So that's that's why I wanted to bring mm-hmm. that up. But um, I think, yeah, so I think mm-hmm. Moni will be able to relate that message. But you did the test yourself. I don't know how much time. Maybe I'm slower. How much time did you have left? <laughs> Maybe I have 15 minutes left of shit. <laughs> no, my reading, like last time that I did, I, like on last Friday, yeah, last I did the test last Friday, I think. Yeah, last Friday. The test was very difficult. The reading part, especially the MCQ, it was all over the screen. The text was very long on wow. like astronomy. I was like, <laughs> oh my gosh. And then another one was like on like history, which is like most topics I didn't like at all. You know? then, but the good thing is um, in filling the blanks, filling blank reading and reading, uh, reading and writing. Have you guys noticed that it's more focused on grammar or like verb forms? Hell grammar. Like, Hell passive, grammar. Active, yeah. relative, close. So it's much yep. better. Yeah, we were talking about that, Sonny and I. We were talking about that when we when I met him in Sydney. How it's a lot of grammar. Yeah. Yeah, yeah a lot of grammar. Yeah. So yeah, that's why. So again, that's what I was checking for. And then same thing. I don't know um, if I did the same thing for listening. Um, it's not a lot of time that you can save for, I don't, again, mm-hmm. I give my students limit on how much time they can spend on right from dictation or how much time I want them to spend on right from dictation. And um, mm-hmm. with that time considered, I, it's the, the, the time to spend on any other task is very limited as well. Um, I don't know if you noticed that, Mani, but I didn't answer any questions. That's how I did it because I didn't actually answer any of the questions. I just skipped, skipped, skipped. When I got to right from dictation, mm-hmm. I saw the mm-hmm. number of minutes mm-hmm. I had left. So by not answering any questions, I only had a limited amount of minutes left for right from dictation. Imagine people are actually trying to sit there and answer the questions. Wait, listening, you have to hear the whole thing. You can't skip yeah, 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 before. Yeah. 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 So that's like that's you would, it would take, I don't know, an extra 15 seconds for you to answer. No, Because you've, you've been there, you've heard the whole thing. No, li- listening, you actually have one and a half minutes for each question before right from dictation one and a half, including the audio time. So if the audio is one minute, it means you have 30 seconds to find the answer. Yeah. 
yeah. yeah and then if you stick within that time then you can you can yeah do rotation yeah i i want to have more time in the right from dictation that's why so i'm take i take that time away from them i don't give them that time yeah because mm. when they get to write from dictation i need them to proofread because you know that's like so important that's the difference yeah 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 so yeah that's what i noticed about the test for the for the time management but if if you guys have yeah. um yeah have a chance to see it test it for yourself to see how much time it takes for you i might actually be slower because now i'm talking to money she might finish that faster than me i only have two minutes left <laughs> i'm panicking let's go let's go i gotta go <laughs> Yeah. I think it's, I think maybe it depends on the t on the test as well. Maybe it depends. Yeah. On the, yeah. They, they were, yeah. I think I talked about it with you guys afterwards. There was a couple questions where I had to triple check it because I wasn't sure. It was a grammatical question. I had to triple check it. There was about two of them. Mm, yeah. mm, 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 mm. Usually the grammatical and, questions. Uh, it's, yeah. 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 No, I want to emphasize that like sometimes people say, oh, my friend got 90 and I'm not getting it even though I prepare really well, right? But then Another factor that can affect your scores is the difficulty of the test. Not every test, you know, will be will look the same. Yes. So some of them yeah. might be more difficult. To be honest, like even you know, like reading, or like write from dictation. Some people might get longer dictate like questions, like the, the sentences, sentences and repeat sentence. So don't blame yourself too much. Yeah. Like uh, yeah, you know, and then it also luck. Yeah, luck also contributes a little bit of it. Yeah. Okay, sure. Well All right. So if the students have any questions, they can also comment and we'll to respond to to all the questions all the questions. All right. So um yes, again it's great chatting with everybody and uh, I look forward to doing this again with you all. All right. I'll see you guys. Cool. Yeah. All right, see ya. Bye. Bye.